Welcome back to All About Winning Daily Fantasy Sports. My name is Ty Patton. In this video, I'm going to share my research and strategy for the wide receiver position in week three of the NFL. In my opinion, the wide receiver position is the most difficult position to get right each week in DFS. It is very volatile. The best way for me to show you an example of this is to just dive right in and show you what's happened already in the first two weeks of the NFL. In week one of the NFL, the top five projected wide receivers on the main slate going into that, that weekend were Evans from Tampa Bay, Julio Jones from Atlanta, Cooks from the Rams, Thielen from Minnesota, and Odell Beckham Jr. from Cleveland. Exactly zero of those wide receivers finished in the top 20. The only one that uh, finished close was Julio Jones, and he finished number 21. Now, in week two, the top five projected wide receivers were Hopkins from Houston, Thomas from the Saints, Juju Smith-Schuster from Pittsburgh, Amari Cooper from the Cowboys, and Julian Edelman from New England. In comparison to the top five projected in, in um, week two, the actual top five scoring were Robinson from Kansas City with 38.20, Sanders from Denver with 28.80, Galladay from Detroit with 28.70, Cincinnati's Tyler Boyd had 25.20, and Cincinnati's John Ross had 24.20. The one statistic that was consistent among these wide receivers were targets. The top five scoring wide receivers last weekend between them shared 47 targets. Now, as, as I've mentioned in my videos, I've already before I've done any of this, I've already went through and looked at the um, the game totals and highlighted the games that have the highest totals. And I've explained this before. I, the reason I do this is because I feel like if those games are going to be the top scoring games, they're going to have the players involved to score those points. Um, one interesting note before I go any further, I wanted to mention that the top wide receivers each week were actually from the team that had the, the highest total. Uh, Kansas City's um, Watkins in week one and Kansas City's Robinson in week two, um, but neither one of them were uh, projected in the top five. So let's take a look at, at targets. The top um, targeted wide receivers so far going into week three are as follows. Michael Thomas from New Orleans has 26. Keenan Allen from the Chargers has 25. Uh, Moore from Carolina has 22. Watkins from Kansas, had, Kansas City has 24 with three touchdowns. Old man Larry Fitzgerald from Arizona has 24. Tyler Boyd from Cincinnati has 22. Hopkins from Houston has 21. Julio Jones from Atlanta has 21. Emmanuel Sanders from Denver has 20. John Ross from Cincinnati has 20. And Christian Kirk from Arizona has 20. I stopped at 20 because that gives uh, double-digit targets per game, 10, at least 10 per game. This is a starting point with, with my wide receivers. Next, I look at at yards per game, air yards, average depth of target. And I, and I look through those statistics and I try to find, are there, is there anything in, in that group that weren't in the top targeted wide receivers? Because the top targeted wide receivers are going to be in my player pool each week. Now I'm looking to see if there's anyone, like I said, outside that, that top group that are doing well in other areas, maybe they're just not getting targeted as much or they're being real efficient. This week, the I found a couple receivers. Um, one was uh, Brown, Hollywood Brown from Baltimore. He's averaging 116.5 yards a game. Brown from Buffalo is averaging 121.5 yards per game. T.Y. Hilton, he scored three touchdowns already. And Galladay really, really stuck out. He's had, um, he's averaging just under 10, 10 targets per game. He's getting nine and a half targets a game. 
Uh, his average depth of target is 15.2 yards. That means um, he's at least get 15 yards downfield before he's uh, the ball is thrown to him. 147 air yards a game. That's how many yards total his routes um, add up to. And 95% snap. He's on the field. He's the guy that um, Stafford's going to. And he he just fell under the threshold that I had for the the uh, top targeted. But he's definitely going to be in the player pool this week. I, I really like Galladay a lot this week. Another statistic I look at is red zone targets. There were a couple um, wide receivers in that area that stood, stood out that weren't in the um, top targeted uh, wide receivers. Um, of course, Emmanuel Sanders is in that group, but he, he has received the most. He's had seven red zone targets already in two weeks. 67% um, of those are inside the 10. Um, Larry Fitzgerald is also in that group. But there's another one, and that's um, Sutton from Denver. He's had four red zone targets so far. So Sutton and Sanders are the ones that are being targeted by Flacco when they get down in the red zone. With the receivers that I started with, with the top targeted, and the ones that I've identified in these other areas, I now have 17 wide receivers in my player pool. Next, I want to look at matchups. I want to look for any wide receiver that I might not have in my player pool that might have a really good matchup because with the receivers, game script is and matchups and game script are very important. Now, Tampa Bay receivers are in play this week versus the Giants. Mainly, the Giants give up 55.7 points per game to the wide receiver position. So Godwin, Evans, and Perriman are definitely um, going to be in my player pool. I like them a lot um, with Galladay. I like the game script. I, I don't see Tampa Bay running the ball. I can see the Giants scoring some. They are starting rookie quarterback this week with Jones. Um, but with Barkley, um, they probably definitely going to be able to move the ball. And Tampa Bay's defense, they're a little bit tougher against the run, so you can see a situation with um, the Giants putting the ball in there. And if they get behind, they're definitely going to be putting the ball in there. But um, I, I definitely want the t Tampa Bay wide receivers in my player pool. Another um, group of receivers are the Minnesota receivers versus Oakland. Oakland's given up 55.5 points per game to the wide receiver. Now, this might be a little bit inflated because they've already had the Kansas City game put on their back. Um, but Diggs, Thielen, and BB are in play. Now, you got to be really careful, too, because uh, Minnesota has been relying on um, Cooks, and they um, are also throwing the ball to Cooks out of the backfield. So be really careful with that. Game script's not really favorable for those wide receivers, but you have to pay attention to that because, you know, um, Oakland has given up a ton of points to the wide receiver position. Now, like I said, taken take into consideration, they have had to play um, Kansas City so uh, already. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. Another group of receivers is the San Francisco uh, wide receivers. Um, Pittsburgh is at allowing 51.4 points per game to the wide receiver position. Um, so the receivers in San Francisco that are in play are uh, Debo Samuel, James, um, Bourne, and, and Goodwin. Seattle receivers versus New Orleans. New Orleans has given up 50 points per game to the wide receiver. So you have to consider Lockett and Brown in, in that game. I can see a situation where that I, that game can is going to score have some points involved. The game total is actually only forty four point five, and a lot of people are thinking because Bridgewater's uh, now in there for Breeze that um, they not may not be able to score. But if um, they do put some points in on the board, New Orleans is, is strong against the run. Um, Ideally, Seattle wants to control 
control the game with Carson and, you know, shorten the game using the running game and keep New Orleans offense off the field. But if New Orleans um, puts some points on the board, you could see a situation where Seattle is going to have to go away from the um, running game a little bit. And, um, or if New Orleans shuts down the running game, they, they were strong uh, last year, one of the strongest teams against the run against the run. And um, so that's something that you have to consider as well. The Philly receivers versus Detroit. Detroit's given up 44.7 points per game. Aguilar, uh, Hollins, um, Whiteside, those are all, uh, one guy's name is Arcega Whiteside, those are all receivers that are in play for Philly. Um, Detroit's given up a lot of uh, points and yards to wide receivers. I think this game has the potential to be one of the shootouts this weekend. The over-under on that game is the third highest at 48. And um, the one thing that's a little worrisome is that Jackson and um, Jeffries are going to be out this week, maybe for a few weeks. So they're going to be relying on, well, they're definitely going to be relying on uh, Ertz. And we'll get to that in the next video tight end. But Aguilar, um, Hollins, and the Artigo Whiteside are definitely in play. I think that, as I mentioned before, I like Galladay. And so Galladay and the Philly um, receivers, if this game is going to be high scoring as Vegas is projecting it to be, those are probably going to be the players to get it done because neither one of these teams have a, a running game um, to mention. So uh, I'm not really worried about that. So definitely we're going to put Philadelphia in Philadelphia. A lot of targets or fell into um, these other categories that stuck out. I have identified a few um, value um, wide receivers, and I'll tell you why. Bird from Arizona, he's $3,000. He's been on the field he's for 90% of the snaps. He's also getting seven targets a game. That's huge for 3000 If you're looking for, um, you know, you're wanting at least four times value on your players, which four four times whatever their salary is. So he's 3000 times four. You're looking for 12 points. If he's getting seven targets, I mean, if he gets a, a touchdown in there, that, he'll definitely um, go over value. And if you can use a wide receiver like that, it definitely it frees up money for other places and you can see from the first two weeks that the top echelon or wide receivers aren't the ones that are showing up in the top five scoring. And the ones being used in the uh, Millie Maker were, um, weren't in the top five. So it's not saying that those receivers don't have the, the capability of getting it done. But if you want to di differentiate, differentiate yourself and have a chance to win any of these, not just the big GPP, but your head-to-head, um, -head, your your 50-50s. Um, if, if you want to have a chance, you want to be different. And for some of these receivers is the way that you do it. The guy last week that won the Millie Maker had Preston Williams and Robinson on his team. Now, he did have a three-man Kansas City stack, which was Mahomes, Kelsey, and Robinson, but Robinson for Kansas City and um, Williams from Miami were owned by less than 1% of the total players in, in daily fantasy sports. That's a, definitely a good way. So if, they, if they go off and score a lot of points and you're the one that has them, you're going to put yourself in a, in a really good position. Um, the, the luck that I've had in... Um, some of these contests, I've actually won two GPPs, uh, one more recently in March. There were 29,000 entries. I had one entry, and obviously I was totally different from everyone else. The other one that I won was uh, an after-4 o'clock GPP in the NFL, 
and it had over 20,000 um, entries. I had two entries into that, and um, I just had just the craziest mix of players, and it worked out for me. You'll see week in and week out, now, and as I mentioned right off the bat, the wide receiver position is so volatile. Um, I don't normally spend up for them. I used to go into daily sports and try to figure out who I thought was going to score a touchdown. I've totally gotten away from that, um, and I don't factor that into my scoring at all. And if I get it, then it's a bonus, and I oftentimes put myself in a really good position. And um, so definitely look at some of the the lower receivers. Look, another thing that I've, I've started doing the last few years is if you know the main receiver, say, for instance, Houston's going to play New England. New England is known for going in and taking out what you do best on offense. What's Houston do best? They throw the ball to Hopkins a lot. Now, if Houston or if New England's going to be fo- focusing on taking Hopkins out, Watson's going to have to throw the ball to somebody. So the number two receiver is often, you know, the one to look at. It's not always the, the top receiver on the team. And so far this year, none of them uh, have fell into the top five that were projected to be in the top five, unlike the running back position, which is more consistent. So other than Bird, Aguilar from Philadelphia, now he was on my Philly list because um, Detroit gives up a lot of uh, points to wide receivers in the, so far in the first two games. But he's $3,600. He's been on the field for 88% of the, of the snaps. And he's getting eight targets a game, just under that threshold of of 10 a game that I said. I had to set it somewhere, and I had 100 receivers. And 103 air yards per game. Another one, and this is a real sleeper, and no one you hear talking about him. The only concern I have about this guy is they're starting a rookie quarterback this weekend. And I don't know what to expect. I know Jones did well in preseason. I think I mentioned in my quarterback um, strategy show that he didn't do well, and that was a mistake. I actually researched him a little bit. I didn't know much about him coming out of college. He did well in in the preseason, but Fowler from the Giants is uh, getting a 76% snap share, seven and a half targets a game, 92.5 air yards. So he's definitely one that no one talks about and if he if he finds some uh, rhythm with Jones gets some targets maybe falls into the end zone now you've got a a player that's probably definitely going to be low owned and you know put yourself in a really good position and when i say ownership if you if you have the ability to to look at the total ownership of, you know, where the players are, um, what players are a lot of people playing. If you take the same players that everyone else has and your other players, you know, don't do as well, then, you know, you don't really have a chance at all to win whatever contest you're in, whether there's 10 entry, 10 players or 10,000 players. But, you know, really focus on... On, on the value where you know look at that look at that um salary and take it four or five times and put and look at a game script and see it, is it possible that this can happen now obviously anything's possible but you know i can't stress it enough that you know there are hidden gems in the first two weeks people have been finding them i haven't found them but um i'm looking i'm looking for them so now that I've done all this, um, went through all these different um, areas to find receivers, targets, value, air yards, matchups versus um, the teams they're playing, I now have 33 total wide receivers in my player pool. Now is when I'm going to try to start trimming them down 
and figure out which ones I want. One of the things I'm going to do, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, is, is um, ownership. If I have a couple wide receivers that are fairly close and I'm really one's 5,400, one's 5,300, and I really can't um, choose between the two, I'm going to consider ownership, you know, and try to get leverage that way. Because the wide receiver is so position is so volatile, con consistently has bust week in, week out, meaning that the top guys haven't been appearing in the top five in the scores. The top targeted wide receivers that I like this week are the following. Fitzgerald. I like um, Fitzgerald because of his snap rate and targets and matchup. Carolina is not doing well against the pass, and Arizona is throwing the ball around. Um, Kyle Murray, Murray, actually, if you've seen my quarterback show, he's had the most pass attempts so far in the first with the first two weeks of the NFL. He actually has 94 pass attempts. So, like Fitzgerald from Arizona, Denver's Emmanuel Sanders. He's getting a ton of targets from Flacco, an 80% 80, 80 catch rate. He's getting red zone targets, end zone targets. He's definitely the guy that Flacco's going to. And his his salary is definitely uh, manageable compared to he is actually, let's look here, Emmanuel Sanders. I want to say he was like 4,800. Yeah, 4,800. So you look at Sanders and then you, up here to you know the top is Hopkins obviously is 7800 if you get similar similar production you have you know you have a lot of value there Kirk from Arizona I like him because of the targets he's getting I also like Bird from Arizona I mentioned him just a few minutes ago the um, the targets he's getting seven game seven a game at three three thousand dollar salary now i'm not going to have him in every lineup but i will definitely have him in a few lineups galladay is one of my favorite uh, picks this week for my player pool the matchups there the targets are there the average depth of depth of targets there the air yards are there the snap he checks off all the boxes and i and stafford goes to him a lot. Um, so I'm definitely going to try to figure a way to, he's at, Galladay is one of the more expensive ones. He's one of 6,600. And that's, truthfully, I don't want to go much higher than, than 6,600. I, I believe I can find value in the wide receiver and spend up at running back. That's going to be my strategy this weekend. And we'll get into that in my strategy show tomorrow. But I, I like Galladay a lot. Godwin and Evans from Tampa Bay. I like both of them. Godwin is probably going to have the higher projection, but I actually like Evans more than I like Godwin. And I believe you know, Evans is actually cheaper. He's another one. He's at, in that 6,600 range. So he could be a pivot off of Galladay. If I see that Galladay is getting a lot of ownership, I could pivot off to Mike Evans. And I believe that would be a good move because a lot of people are going to go to this uh, Godwin. He Godwin gets a ton of targets and and um, red zone targets and but that might be a way to go and and I'll consider that. I'll be playing. I play. A, I don't play 150 lineups in one contest. I play a variety of contests, maybe one or two in each. I do play in the Millie Maker, the $20 entry for a shot at a million dollars. And if you see me on uh, Monday doing the showdown, you know I didn't win the million dollars. But so I'll probably be back on Monday. Next up is uh, Lockett for um, Seattle. I like Lockett's matchup this week. Um, I think Metcalf may draw coverage for. From Lattimore. If that happens, Lockett will be a really good uh, uh, pick for Seattle. Now, if Lattimore matches up with him and they can't get any shadows, shadows him, maybe not. But I, I do like Lockup's matchup this weekend. 
Um, Philadelphia receivers Aguilar, Hollins, Arcega, Whiteside, they're all in play against Detroit. Detroit's given up 44.5 points a game uh, to the wide receiver position, and I will um, have those players in the player pool. Allen from the Chargers. It's hard not to consider Allen. It's just that $6,000 that I don't like. And the one thing that has been pretty consistent for the Chargers in the first two weeks is their offense is going through Allen and Eckler. Allen's also in the slot, and Houston has um, been horrible uh, against the slot wide receiver. And this is, uh, I think this is the first year Allen's been operating um, primarily out of the slot position. He has a really good matchup, and Phillip Rivers likes him. Uh, he was a little banged up earlier in the week. I had seen something. Yeah, it says he does not carry an injury designation for Sunday's game against the Texans after practicing fully Friday. If I can get up to him in a couple, um, like I said, I I don't put one player in every single lineup because the chance of someone twisting an ankle on the first play and then you get zeros across the board. You get a zero, you can just pretty much look at your next contest because you're done. But I, if I can get up from Galladay, Galladay from 6,600 to Allen or um, Evans, I might sprinkle in a little bit of Keelan, Keenan Allen. I, I like Allen a lot. He... he does get a lot of targets, and um, Rivers is he, he's one of Rivers' favorites. Thielen and Diggs, they both have um, really good matchups against Oakland. Oakland's given up um, a lot of points to the wide receiver position so far in the first two weeks. As I discussed, part of that is because they've already had the Kansas City beatdown put on them. So um, teams that have Face them, may teams that have faced Kansas City will probably have inflated uh, defensive numbers um, due to um, Mahomes and the attack that they bring to the game. Carolina's more, he's getting a lot of targets, has a really good matchup against um, Arizona. And Arizona running their fast break offense or whatever it's called, from uh, where they're just throwing the ball all around. Um, really up tempo creates a lot of plays, which um, also means the other team gets a lot of plays. So that should put um, Moore in a good position to um, get his share of targets. Now I need, to, you know, I'll look more at this in the strategy show tomorrow. I'll see if there. Oh, Cam Newton. Here we go. Cam Newton is is ruled out. There you go. I just seen that and. Um, isn't traveling with the Panthers for Sunday's game in Arizona. Um, Red Bears, sick quarterback, felt pretty good at the end of the week. Max Hendrick, you know, so Kyle Allen. So that will probably make me want to eliminate more from the um, player pool, which I will do. I, I don't know much about Moore uh, or Allen. And, I mean, he may be great. He may... More may be his main target, but I uh, I don't know much about him. And if they're smart, they'll um, utilize McCaffrey, unlike they did in their last game against Tampa Bay. Um, hopefully, they'll check down a lot to uh, McCaffrey. I have him in my season-long uh, team. So Cincinnati's Tyler Boyd. <clears throat> I like the matchup and and the target share that he's getting. Um. Cincinnati's having a really hard time on offensive line, and that's not a good thing to have going into Buffalo and rushing the, you know, putting the pressure on Andy Dalton. If um, Boy or Dalton can get some time and stay upright, he can probably um, do some damage with uh, Boyd. Um, but I, I like, do like him. He is the number one receiver on the team as far as um, with the A.J. Green not playing right now. Uh, Boyd's the number one. Ross is number two, even though Ross's numbers are better. And I mentioned, I already mentioned um, 
Allen due to his targets here. Now, being different, finding the right combination begins with looking at targets, matchups, and value. You, you have to do some research and, and break it down. Um, look at the game script. Does it make sense? Um, you know, if you got a team that's um, not giving up a lot of passing yards, or they have a shut down corner, or you, you know, a team that's quarterback is out. You know, those things you you got to keep an eye on. I also consider the snap percentage, average average depth of target. Red zone, tar- red zone targets. I factor all these things in with wide receivers and try to come up with the right combination. Um, I don't always look and say, well, I just want to get one of the top wide receivers. I don't do it that way. Um, and I would I would venture to say this week the very top is Hopkins, Adams, Cooper, Thomas, and Jones. I would be surprised if two of them finished in the top five. One other player that I wanted to mention, and I wanted to mention him last, and I'm going to put him in the player pool, Um, James Washington from Pittsburgh. And the reason I mentioned him as last is because he doesn't check any of the boxes that I have, except for value, $3,500. He's not getting targets. He doesn't have a lot of air yards. He's got a backup quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger is out. And that's the exact reason why I'm targeting James Washington. Washington played college football with Mason Rudolph, who is now the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They combined for 33 touchdowns when they were in college together. The past two years in the preseason games when Rudolph played, he was throwing the ball to Washington and Washington was doing well. Ironically, the only time Washington did do well was when Rudolph was in the game. I think Washington is very sneaky. They have a rapport, and he's on thirty five hundred dollars. He could be lower owned. A lot of people are going to, you know, be going to Juju Smith Schuster. He and Vance McDonald um, at the tight end position, but. He is definitely one that you want to have in your player pool. He is going to be in my player pool, and I'm going to have him in a few a few lineups just just to different, differentiate myself. Now, if I look and I, everybody else is thinking the same thing I am, then I'm going to get off of that and you know go somewhere else. Now, putting all this information together and cross referencing to eliminate some wide receivers is a good way to build this pool of wide receivers. Game totals, targets, snap percentage, routes run, red zone targets, the matchups, the game script. I even look at the physical matchups. Like I know the last two weeks, Tyler Boyd has had really good um, matchups. He's like five or six inches taller. Last week, he was five inches taller than um, the defensive back that was guard, uh, guarding him. Um, I look at that, you know, I look at the cornerback that's going against him. Has he been, you know, lit up pretty good so far this year? Are our teams going after that certain player? You know, I mentioned earlier, if Lattimore for New Orleans is, is matched up against Lockett, you, you pro- probably want to temper your expectations for Lockett. But these are all the things that I do when looking at my wide receivers. And when I come back to do the strategy show, I'll already have these highlighted with the running backs that we've already covered, the quarterbacks, um, tight ends, and defense, which I'm going to do next. And um, and I'll touch on, you know, the reasons why. Um, I may eliminate a couple, and I'll tell you why. I'll also pay really close attention to injuries right now, um, and not just not just the wide receiver injury. Like if the quarterback's out, that's definitely that's you know the 
person throwing in the ball. Right now, T.Y. Hilton, I looked earlier and it hadn't been updated, uh, listed as questionable for Sunday's game against the Falcons after practicing in a limited fashion this past week. Given that he practiced in some capacity all week, we'd be surprised if Hilton was unable to play this weekend. If, however, he ends up limited or even ruled out Sunday, added targets would be available for, for fellow wide receivers Deion Kane, Paris Campbell, Pascal, and Rodgers. And I really think the Colts are sneaky this weekend. Um, Atlanta's uh, pass defense is um, definitely leaves a lot to be desired. They are ranked. Um, well, they're they're ranked eleventh, but Wentz did didn't have any problems, and he he was using all every one of his wide receivers got hurt, and he he still put together some numbers. So, I I, I like Indianapolis. They their their first two games were on the road. They played. Um, let's look here. I know they were last weekend. They played Tennessee on the road, and. The week before that, the Chargers on the road. This is our first home game, indoors, fast track, T.Y. Hilton, and um, Brissett's first home start. So I think they could be a little bit sneaky and put some points on Atlanta. Atlanta um, gives up points through the air. So before I close this out, I'm going to give give you a quick reminder to please – um, subscribe, hit the like button. If, if you got any value, I always say this, you know, obviously don't know if you got value till Sunday, um, but hit it anyhow. And you can take it back on Monday if it doesn't work out. No, um, hit the uh, notification bell. So you'll get notified when my next video drops. This is my second week uh, doing this really excited this week uh, because we have a two week example. It's not much, but it's more that I can add to my my research, and um, I believe in my process, and um, I'm willing to, to share it with you. I'm going to go for now. I'm going to be putting together the tight end defense special teams, and then tomorrow we'll also be doing the strategy show where we actually build some lineups together and um, uh, go from there. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in a little bit with the tight ends, defenses, special teams. My name is Ty Patton. This is all about winning daily fantasy sports. Thank you.